Yo, S bus. Hey everyone, AC Glenn here with Team Photography USA. So today we're going to talk about SBUS. The way SBUS works is it outputs a packet of information, like channel 1 goes to position X, channel 2 goes to position Y. All of this is happening 100 plus times a second, and each servo is listening to the channel you told it to listen to in the servo programming. This breaks away from the traditional PWM method, where each channel has one specific output on the receiver. With SBUS, it allows for many different benefits, ranging from cutting down on cables, to cable managing your airplane, all the way to when you're reassembling that giant scale and you have two aileron servos, knowing that each time you plug the aileron servo into its extension, that it's going to the right channel. So before we start programming the servo, let's talk about what you can actually use to program the servo. Uh, with most of the type of transmitters, there's going to be a serial port on the back of the transmitter that you can plug the servo directly into and start programming. There's one condition to that though. With the 14SG, the 16SZ, the 18MZ, and the 18MZWC, you're also going to need to power the servo while you're programming. With that being said, you can just use a Y harness. So you plug it back into the back of the transmitter, you plug the battery into one port, and you plug your servo into the other port, and then you're able to program the servo as well. Now, with the 18SZ and the 18SZ 70th edition, along with the 32MZ, you're going to be able to program without having to power the servo. So you can plug the servo directly into the back of the transmitter. Now, if you don't want to use your transmitter to program, you can also use your computer. Fataba makes a great product called the CIU3. That allows you to be able to program through your computer each individual setting that you would like on your servo. Now, if you're a heli guy and you happen to use the CGY760, you can also use your GPB1 to program your servos as well. So let's talk about programming the servo. Here I have a BLS-175, which is typically used for a rudder servo on an F3A model, be it a biplane or a monoplane. I'm also going to be using my 32MZ here to program the servo. First, we're going to go to System. We're going to Page Over, and we're going to click on SBUS Servo. This is going to bring up your SBUS Servo menu. This menu has a wide range of features from actually telling you the ID to the servo, to changing the channel, to travel adjustment, or even being able to change your neutral offset, which is like sub trim. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is hit recall to actually recall the servo so that the transmitter and the servo are now talking. As you can see, it's programmed to channel one, which is elevator for most of my models. For rudder, however, we're gonna need to change it to channel three. So we're gonna click on channel, we're gonna go up to channel three, and then we're gonna hit right. When you make changes in the SBUS servo menu, you're going to want to always want to hit right after you make that change so that it's actually written to the servo. So you can see now that it is working on my rudder channel as normal. So now it is programmed to that channel. Next thing we can talk about is neutral offset, which works just the same as sub trim, except you wouldn't need sub trim in your actual model because it's actually programmed to the servo. So we're going to click on neutral offset. As you can see, as I go up in value, the offset changes, so it's exactly the same as sub trim. Then, like I said before, you're going to always want to write to the servo so that it's always programmed there. So everyone, thanks for watching. This is just going to be part one in my SBUS series. In part two, we're going to go over terminal boxes, SBUS hubs, and what they mean and how you can use them. I'm gonna give you a brief overview of my aircraft and how I have my hub set up and which terminal box I'm using, which hub I'm using, specifically for F3A. So stay tuned for the next video. Until then, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know.